Okay, so welcome back to my channel. This is a, going to be a recap of Insatiable Season 2, Episode 8, Pretty in Prison. Okay, so it picks up after all of her, all of, after all of Patty's half-assed capoeira, somebody she was able to take out these drug people and, you know, end up killing all three of them. Okay, so... Now, they're panicked. Patty and Angie are panicked. They're trying to find out what the hell are they going to do with these bodies? What What's going on? Okay. So, um, they decide to dump the bodies in a swamp. And so, um, but before that happens, while they're trying to figure out what they're going to do, Henry shows up. So, of course, that pants like, well, first she pretended like, they was like, just pretend like you're not here. And then he was like, I, I can see you. So, she's like, oh, damn, they have to open the door. So, go open the door. Of course, she cracks the door because he was bringing her her, ro her flowers and her sash for being third runner up. And he wanted to spend, he it was his last night in town. Him and his family were going back to Minnesota and he wanted to spend his last night with her. But of course she couldn't invite him in, just dead bodies all over the place, okay? So she ends up breaking up with him, which devastates him. And of course that's not what he wanted, but given the circumstances, I mean, it was another way to get rid of him. So that's what she did. She felt bad about it, but um, it was what it was. Um, uh, so they've decided, okay, they're going to dump these bodies. And so they're talking and Patty was like, okay, maybe I can be honest with her. Um, she was like, uh, cause, uh, Angie said, I should say after all the things that I've done for you, done to you and you did this to save my life and I just so out of character for you to done. And then Patty was like, it's not mom, I'm a killer. And so Angie was like, oh, her, oh just stop. Oh, no, th and this was self-defense. I can't imagine you hurting anybody who didn't deserve it. And so she was like, okay. So Angie basically brushes it off and was like, okay, we need to get rid of these bodies. Okay, so then we flash to uh, Bob Armstrong. Armstrong is at home. He's moved back into the house. Of course, Corley is not happy. And so he's doing his photography. Uh, he's having a, um, a photo session because he, need, he needs... Uh, photos for his campaign. And so, of course, Corley's like, what are you doing? And so she comes in and interrupts the whole thing, the floor thing. And so she's like following him from room to room to room just to be in the way. And so, they're, of course, they're going back and forth and just being really petty with each other. And so um, they decide eventually he pulls out this bright pink tape that just happens to be in the kitchen drawer. And they decide to, he was uh, dividing the kitchen counter. And of course, Brick walks in like, what the hell is going on? The photographer's like, okay, what? Y'all seem like y'all got a lot of stuff y'all need to work out here. I'm going to go ahead on the go. Brick was like, I'm going over to Magnolia's. The hell with this shit. And so he left. Everybody left. Okay, so Angie and Patty now, it's the next day they're on their way to the parade because she was third runner up. She's in the parade. She rises on the float. And so, of course, they're running late because they had to dump the bodies. And so, on the way, Nani called her. And Nani uh, gave her the update that she found out that Heather was the person that hired the hitman. So, of course, Patty's now pissed off. And she's like, oh, you just wait until I get there. I'm gonna, basically, I'm going to confront that bitch. Okay. So, she was late. So, the, pa the, the float was already moving. But, obviously, floats, they move at a slow place. So, now she's trying to get close so she can get on the float. Heather is like, don't speed up, speed up. She was late. Da, 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 da. And so, of course, Patty is trying to get on this float. The next thing you know, there's an explosion. So, Heather, whatever the hell, how many names, she blows up. And then the next person blows up. And it's like every contested pageant person who was on that float blows up. Okay. The only person who's not on the float is Patty. So, of course, then she, you know, everybody turns to her like, she killed my daughter. See, people already have an inkling that Patty is a killer. Because people tend to die around her and have mishaps and whatnot. And so, the crowd turns on her. The cops uh, uh, basically arrest her. And she was like, I can't believe that I'm actually being arrested for a triple murder I didn't do. So, she's now in custody. Um, Bob comes in and she's telling him, he basically told her that he couldn't represent her. So, of course, she was devastated because every other time she's been in a, in a pickle, he's been there to help her get out. But now he's saying, you know what, you're, you were right the last time. Like, we, we can't be honest with each other. And it seems like, you know, I'm not good for you. And so he got Shannon to represent her. Shannon was the, is the attorney who represented Dixie um, when, I forget, I forget what happened. Basically, she was going to sue Pat, uh, <laughs> um, sue I don't even remember. I can't remember back the episodes. But anyway, she represented uh, um, Dixie. So she's a shark. She's she's good at what she does. 
And so, of course, you know, they're both uh, um, sad, uh, Patty and Armstrong, because it's like they've been thick as thieves for, for a while now. And so, as he's leaving, the um, presser outside and said, what about your your uh, your client? Da, da, da. And he was like, she's not my client. I'm never representing her. And he, he was like, is that because you think she's guilty? No, I, I know I don't believe that she's uh, guilty. I'm just not, you know, I'm, I have to focus on my mayoral campaign. I'm not representing her. And then he saw it as a chance. I forget, something had popped up on his phone. And he decides, you know what? He said, you guys want a story? So they follow him to the gym while Barnard is working out. And he basically <laughs> confronts Barnard and challenges him to a debate. And so now he didn't put his foot in it. And, and so now everybody's going to be expecting this debate between him and Barnard. Okay. So Patty, um, Patty actually went straight to prison. There was a bed bug outbreak or something at the jail. And so instead of going to jail to be held for bail, she went right on to the prison house. And yeah. So of course she's sitting there with real killers. She's sitting there like, okay, God, what am I going to do? All these people kind of looking at her, making like, you know, threatening gestures. And so when Warden Winters walk in, it's a black guy, and he wants to, walks in to talk to her. And he's saying that we, you know, his, uh, they seem to do very well in other competitions, except I had to write this down, okay? The National Prison Coalition of Mis, uh, Misguided Beauty, pa beauty Competition. So apparently they have... A beauty competition and he wants her to pick out and help him pick out a pageant winner because that's the only thing that they haven't been able to win and when you see what they have to offer and then you kind of see why they them some hard looking bitches okay i'm so sorry lord forgive me okay but um so it really doesn't matter what patty could do them some rough looking hoes. I am so sorry. But anywho, but she's like, okay, maybe, you know, this will help her pass the time until she get bail and the whole thing. So, okay, she's agreed to do that. So Angie, she's trying to get this money because Shannon wants a $10,000 retainer. So she's now trying to get this money. So she calls this, this CD um, doctor that she know that works in the, you know, the under, under, the underworld, you know, one of them doctors that do, you, you know, your plastic surgeries and remove bullets and, you know, patch bullet holes and stuff. So you don't go to the regular doctor. So now you want police radar. So she, she, she got one of them on, in her Rolodex. So she called him because she needs him to remove the, uh, the cocaine so she can sell the cocaine so she can have the money to pay, uh, for Patty's defense. So he was like, okay, I'll do it. For what she was gonna give him a half a kilo. He was like, I want a whole kilo. So basically he took a whole titty. Basically, that's basically what he took. She was like, okay, fine. What else could she say? So he went in to do the procedure, came to her house to do the procedure. So um her Armstrong and Coralie, they still at it. So he gets home. She's already divided the living room up. And of course, all of the furniture is on her side of the room. So he's like, okay, so he's going to get back on her ass. So he had some builders come in. He's, She's like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm going to build. He's like, I'm going to build a wall. Well, I'm never going to get any sleep. And he's like, oh, well, too bad. So sad. Now she started to shit by messing up his photo shoot, right? Okay, so now she's like, okay. Now, uh, Brick and Magnolia, uh, now remember in the last episode, he decided he wants to be an influencer, a YouTuber. And so they decided that instead of giving advice, he's going to do, um, be, do magic tricks because he seemed to be good at that. But it turns out that Magnolia is actually, uh, better at it. So they kind of swap places. So Magnolia was going to be like his assistant and, you know, he obviously going to be a magician, but then they end up swapping places and swapping costumes, which was something interesting. Okay. So. We moving right along. I'm trying to make these videos as short as possible, okay? Uh, prison pageant. So, um, she that so they now have the the women lined up that they want to put forth for this pageant. And like I said, these are them from some rough looking bitches. Oh, okay. Anywho, so they're all. Um, so Patty's like, okay, there are three parts. There's the the gown, the talent. And the question portion. And the lady was like, question portion. She said, you a narc like, th like this bitch here or something. And the woman was like, I'm not a narc. So, of course, the fight break out. And um, <laughs> uh, Shelby is there. She's the voice of reason. She's one of the going to be one of the contestants, right? And she's like, just, you know, she's just doing something nice to shut up and sit down. Okay. So, we're going to find out Shelby had her own plan. So, um, so, uh, Patty was like, just, you know, make your dresses and get your talent together and then we'll come back. So, 
in the um in the interim, every last one of those women threatened her that if they weren't chosen, that she that basically they would kill her. So eventually they all sitting around and Patty was like, I don't even know what to do because every one of y'all confronted me and told me that if I didn't choose y'all, you were gonna you were gonna kill me. And so Shelby was like, Yeah, damn copy cast, because Shelby was the first person to do it. And she said, and anyway, we know ain't nobody gonna kill her. I, she, she's like, she's a tech person. She's in for money laundering. She, these two in for prostitution. Ain't no damn murderers in here. So nobody was gonna kill her anyway. So, um, eventually they talked and it was like, okay, we're gonna do this the right way. We're gonna do the, the, the go through the whole process. Okay. Um, so you kind of see them going through, she showed them how to walk and, um, they're making their dresses and the whole thing and their, um, talents and the whole thing. Okay. So Bob and Corley, so he, they, still at it. So he goes into the closet. All of his clothes are gone. She didn't tell him she was taking this stuff. They were just gone. So of course, with the water roses in the house, where they're back, they're just being petty to each other. He, um, sees that his clothes are gone. And he texted her, he said something to her, and she responded, he sent her a text, he said something, I can't remember what the text said, but he was pissed, he's like, okay, she took my clothes, I'm gonna get her ass back, so he saw the crawl space, remember where Regina Regina popped out, and that's where uh, Coralie had all of the boxes of tampoozles, so he's sitting there cutting the damn tampoozles up when she comes into the house, like, she's like, what are you doing, this is my future, why would you do this, she said, why would you take my clothes, and she was like, I wear my suits, is what he said, what he asked and she was like I took them to the cleaners you asshole and so now he's sitting there feeling like shit because he even fucked up some of her tampoos was her money and she was like this isn't over so she grabs a handful of them stick them in her pocket and walk out and he's like uh okay um so uh ch -ch 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 -ch. so Patty's uh, eventually Shannon comes to visit her and she tells her about a security camera but um, the, the, the quality of the video, so granted, they can't make out what it was, but they could get to see the timestamp, which was 10 o'clock. And it was like, do you have anybody who can vouch for your whereabouts at that time? And she was like, Henry. So she tries to call Henry and Henry hangs up because of course the last time they parted away, she, you know, she basically broke up with him and slammed the door in his face. So he didn't want to talk to her, but Shannon was like, you know what? I'll track him down. I'm going to get this done. Don't worry about it. So, uh, Nani uh, and Angie, so Angie, they've had, she's had the procedure. The doctors removed the, um, the implants. She still drugged out of her mind from, uh, <laughs> the painkillers or whatever it was she was taking. And Angie, and Nani's like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Why, how could you be in here? Are you drunk? Your daughter's going, your daughter's in prison. Sorry, I just got to pop up. Your daughter's, um, going to prison and you, what, what is going on with you? And she basically said that, um, those, you know, I had cocaine in my, in my bosoms. I know your dad is a cop. I know he know drug dealers. I need to sell all this stuff so I can pay for, cat, uh, Patty's, um, um, lawyer. So I'm thinking no one's going to be like, uh, you want me to ask my dad for drug dealers? Are you serious? Uh, um, but none was like, okay, so they are going to work something out. Um, so, um. Barnard and Rudy are, they just get back to Rudy's place and they're talking about the campaign and there's some video that Barnard did and he really didn't like it. And so they're talking and they're about to get into it. And that's when Cora Lee texts him. She wants him to come to the house like now, right, right now. Cause this is after she's, she's mad at Bob for cutting up her tampoozles. And so he had to go. And then Rudy was like, wait a minute, she calls you and you just leave. He was like, she's my best friend. I, you know, I have to go and see, you know, what's going on with her. So he left. And Rudy crazy as shit. And we gonna find, I'm gonna get back to that. So Rudy was like, uh, he opens his closet door and he has a cardboard, full size cardboard cutout of both bars. Cause he's like, he wants both of them. He's a goddamn stalker, right? And so he feels some kind of way that now he's like, okay, Coralie is coming between him and his bobs. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so the, now it's the, the pretty in prison pageant where they get to choose the person who's going to represent. So they all come out looking at a goddamn mess and these little, these little things that they stitch together in the clothes. And so they called everybody out. Shelby was the last person that's supposed to come out. So they're like, okay, Shelby so-and-so. So they're like, oh, okay. So they wait for Shelby. Then we call Shelby so-and-so. They see, you know, you see Shelby. Shelby is in a goddamn, I guess Shelby uh, made a prison uniform, a prison guard uniform. 
And her ass walked right on out the front door and was like, you know, I see you guys whenever. And she hit the road. So now the guards come in and was like, okay, Shelby has escaped. So now all of them are mad. Like, you were in it with her. You did this, that, being honest shit. My ass, you talking about doing this pageant the honest way. And you helped her escape. So now they all think that Patty was in cahoots with Shelby to help Shelby escape, which of course was not true. She was played too. So they just threw uh, Shel uh, Patty in the hole. And Patty, first of all, when they said, you going to the hole, Patty was like, where, what is the hole? And, uh, Winters, uh, Warden Winters like, that's where you about to go. So, um, so Patty's in the hole and then she knows she see an evil side. She's like having some kind of, uh, a mental break where she's down talking to herself. She's like looking at another version of herself with all this blood over her face. And she's like, you know, you belong here. Da, da, da. And of course it's the whole thing about you're an evil person. You're a bad person. And you know, you know, you killed and it's not because of self-defense and basically saying you killed cause you liked it. Da, 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 da. And then she you know the door opens. It's Warden Winters telling her that she was uh, being released. Shannon got whatever information you need to get from Henry confirmation was able to. And so now Patty is a free woman. So Nani and Angie, they're at the house. They was able to sell the drugs. They have this whole duffel bag full of money. And you can see the wheels are spinning in Angie's head. Angie's about to do some more fucked up shit. I can just believe, I can see it. But she was like, I could buy an airplane. I could do this. I could do this. And she was like, or, and Nani was like, or we can go to the page, the Miss Whatever pageant and we can help go to support um, um, Patty. And he was like, yeah, you know what? That is a good idea. But you can see, she gonna do some more. She gonna let Patty down under some more fucked up shit. Okay. But while they're sitting there, Noni's all dancing around with the money and uh, Angie gets a text and it's a campaign video from Barnard. And so I guess that was just sent out in a blast. And she sees this swamp, the swamp where they dump the bodies. Well, one of his campaign, one of his uh, talking points for his campaign is that he's gonna drain that swamp and build a better prison. So, of course, she's about to hit the roof because if they drain the swamp, they're going to find the bodies, da 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 Okay. Um, Coralie is, um, okay, so Bob eventually, Bob Armstrong, Bob Barnard eventually gets to the house. Armstrong is sitting at the table. He's still trying to work on his, uh, his, uh, camp, his speech for their, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Working on his speech for their, uh, think I can't even think of my brain. Just, I just had a brain fart. He challenged them to whatever the thing he challenged him to. Um, and, and, uh, Barnard, she basically takes Barnard upstairs. So the next thing you know, he's sitting there working. And next thing you know, you hear the bear spring, the spray going, and they're like, oh, oh, da, 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 the whole thing. And so now Barnard is like, what the hell? And so you go up, you, they flash the upstairs, and of course, they're not really having sex. They're just making the noise. Eventually, I guess Coralie falls off the bed and splits her forehead. And so, of course, he's like, oh, my God, are you okay? Then he sees the blood. This is Barnard. He's like, oh, my God, I get queasy, and I get dizzy when I see blood. She's like, are you serious? So next thing you know... Armstrong walks in. He's like, what are you guys faking? And she's telling Bar Barnard, please don't faint because when you faint, then Armstrong faints. There's something wrong with him. So next you know, both the Barnards are on the, on the floor. She's like, God damn. She was like, men are so weak. So she was so done like, God damn, both of them are out. Um, so, uh, Cora Lee is at the hospital and she got, um, she had to get a couple of stitches or something. It wasn't like that's, um, thing. And so the doctor not only told her, okay, you, you know, you're fine. She also told her that she was eight weeks pregnant. So of course she's like, uh, hmm. So around this time, both Bob's walking like, are you okay? Oh my God. You know, she's like, no, everything is fine. It's fine. And she said, uh, so the doctor left and she, they was like, are you sure you're okay? She's like, yeah, I'm going to, they just going to keep me for a while. It's going to be, it's going to be, um, I'm fine. It's all good. You guys can go on the go. So, um, she starts flashing back on basically her last time she was with both of them. And basically she don't know who the daddy is. So they both leave and you see them in the parking lot and basically Barnard is trying to convince Armstrong to drop out and how he's only doing it to get back at him and how he doesn't really want to win. And you can see in his face, so usually Armstrong, Armstrong looks at him and he's like, you're actually afraid that I might beat you. 
And of course, Barnard is like, I've never lost anything in my life. You said you're, but you're afraid now. Otherwise, you wouldn't be, be trying so hard to convince me to drop out. So, um, they're going back and forth there. And while they're doing this, Rudy shows up at the hospital. And so he's talking to Coralie and she was like, okay, well, what are you, why are you here? And he said, well, when we see, you know, when a woman comes in, uh, with, uh, injuries we send the you we want to make sure that it's not a result of domestic abuse da, 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 which it wasn't he was just you always say he crazy and so she was like no no i'm glad that you guys do that but no i'm fine it's just a little something and it's all it's fine and so she was like he started talking to um asking her questions and then she said that she's then she for whatever reason admitted uh the devil that she was pregnant and don't say the police don't tell anybody he was like your secret is safe with me and then he offered to give her a ride home and so they, she, he put her in the back of the police car because he's like, oh, okay, I understand. You know, you can't move your stuff. Da, da, da. So she's like, it's been a long time. She just started going to make a small talk. It's been a long time since I've been in the back of one of these. Da, da, da. And then she was like, oh, well, I live back there. This motherfucker had his foot on the gas. So we go, um, I'm thinking that Rudy is the passion killer. I'm just going to go with that. That's going to be my uh, thing here. We have two more episodes to go. And that's basically how this episode ended. Him speeding down the road and looking at her in the rear room mirror crazy. And she's banging on the window screaming for help. Okay. Um, if Coralie dies, I can, assure, I can assure you that I will not be watching the show anymore. Okay. We just, we just going to leave it there. But, okay, I'm going to end this here. And I will talk to you guys later.